guys, we're driving to a few different calls in Wilmington, North Carolina. We had an ice storm move through the last couple days. Everything was frozen, all the tree branches were frozen. There's a little bit of snow, but there was a lot of ice. Uh, so the heat pumps were kind of heading for the hills. They couldn't handle it. And what I mean by that is, the tops of them were getting frozen over during the off cycles. The fan blades would get frozen in place. And then when the heat comes back on, of course, essentially your outdoor units are an evaporator coil and heating. So when you have no fan, the evaporator coils freeze just like in cool. So the unit would freeze up and of course it would defrost, but the time defrost units would defrost every 30, 60 or 90 minutes. Therefore, after it defrost, warmed up that sensor, it would go for another 30, 60 or 90 minutes of freezing. And sometimes the defrost just couldn't handle it. It might melt the ice around the sensor and just you know keep on running. So there's a lot of calls like that, a lot of noisy fan blades where ice hit them and things like that nature. So I'm heading to several today. A lot of people lost power and then regained it, had some problems with their units, some blank thermostat screens, some trip breakers. So it's a big full day of ice storm damage control. So it should be interesting and hopefully we find something fun. Well here's our destruction of pine trees. Pine trees really hate ice. As you see we have some limbs still hanging. Here's the type of our Goodman unit that took a beating. R22 is a dry charge unit I installed a few years ago on a rental house. It looks like the fan blade is bent. So probably replace that sucker. Try to get a new top for it too. But it is what it is. Is our disconnect? Alright, new top, new fan blade. Alright guys, now we're on a train air handler and it has no power. So we got a lead L2, lead on L1. I don't have it right where the power comes in because it goes into a wire nuts right here. I have it where the wire branches off from the wire nuts. The heat strips are not on, there's no power coming into the unit, therefore there's no control voltage. So I'm going to figure out why uh, a power outage came through the area after the ice storm. And now this unit does not have power. So we're going to look for a trip breaker and see if there's something wrong or else to just a breaker trip because of a nuisance. What I'm doing here is I have the mega ohm meter on some of the circuitry in the air handler just to see if I can detect a ground. It's not really, not really the intended use, but it'll give me a general idea if the system is grounded in some way. And it looks like we're happy campers. Well, I turned the breaker back on because it was off downstairs and the motor took off. So we're going to turn it back on again. I'll put the doors back on, see if the outdoor unit's coming on. But it might just be a nuisance trip from when the power kept coming on and off. We will see. All right, guys. This is our second unit. As you just heard here, if you could hear that refrigerant in that line, it you know, appeared to have been going through defrost. This line was very hot. This section line was cold, as if it wasn't air conditioning. It has shut off. In a few seconds, it should start again in heat mode. Our frog unit here has gone back into heating. You can tell this is the hot gas line in heating mode. It'll be extremely hot. And then you'll have, because that's coming right off the compressor basically, and you have this, a subcooled liquid line. It'll still be warm. Um, there are some negative things to this job. It's directly panned to the unit. Uh, has quite a sharp turn here. The duct's actually too small for the unit. Uh, the return grill is too small as well, so it runs a little hot all the time, which is unfortunate. Guys, we have our train-a-thon today. Three train units in a row here. Uh, the middle one, I saw one where the breaker was turned off. Turns out the guy's son turned it off, uh, thinking that it was on even though that it was facing the opposite direction of every other breaker on that row. 
I'm not here to judge. I have the two gauges here. High side, subcooled liquid, and our true suction on the line coming back to the compressor. I'm gonna turn this unit on because it was tripped. It was a different trip breaker. They said they had to reset. It's been running since then, but I wanna see why it might have tripped. So we're gonna run it for a minute. All right, our compressor is running in heat mode. At 228 volts, we're almost at six amps. We're gonna follow that for a minute. It should rise. Suction pressure is right around 50. Discharge pressure is near 250. So we'll let it roll for a little while and see how it does. Guys, keep in mind that this system has decreased return air with increased static pressure against a standard PSC blower. So we have 6.3 amps now. We'll see if it keeps rising. Our suction pressure stayed a shade below 50. Our liquid pressure has risen to 265, and it's been about five minutes. We'll give it about five more and check in on it again. All right, guys, it's been about 10 minutes. Our amperage is held pretty steady, 6.3. The rated amp for the compressor is 7.3, so we're below that uh, by about 15%. Our suction pressure has stayed pretty, pretty much the same. We have a TXV metering device in the outdoor unit as is, you know, on most train. Down here, we're looking at being, oop, go back up. Down here, we're looking at around 280, which I know was a significant increase over what is normal. Uh, there are no charging or service packs with this unit, but I know that in experience tells me that we're looking at around between 200 and 220 pounds probably for the high side at 36 degrees outside. If not, if even that much, it may be even lower than that. Uh, but I do know that having it at 280 is much too high and it continues to increase as the room temperature upstairs, as the room temperature upstairs increases. So. No airflow. That's what it looks like in the winter time. Increased head pressure, increased heat, increased amperage. None of those are good and all of those will shorten the life of the AC heat pump.